so here's yet another attempt to do something with the same, with the same formulation. Right? Again, this is our set of assumptions that we made. And this time, we're going to try to look at A5 directly, because that is really what's the most problematic. That is the assumption that says that when you don't have any relevance information, when you don't have any examples of relevant documents, how on earth are you going to estimate the PWs? That's where all the previous attempts sort of degenerate into heuristics. So we're going to try to address that directly and explicitly. And in the process, this model actually ends up addressing A1, A2, and A4. Um, sort of by way of uh, having to do certain things with A5. Now, before we do that, uh, we need a little bit of machinery from basic probability 101. <clears throat> and um, so there is, uh, if you have a document, there is basically two ways to model it. We've gone through one of them in the probabilistic model, and now we'll go, we're going to go through the second one, right? So first, let's recap what the probabilistic model does. We have a document. Uh, this is our vocabulary. The words are A, B, C, D, E. The document has the words A, B, A, C, right, as a sequence. And of course, we're going to throw away the word order. So really, you have three words, A, B, and C. Just one of them is repeated twice. So the classical model, which we just did, models the document, represents the document as a set. So it's a multiple Bernoulli model in a way. It's a, it's a set of terms or a binary vector. Uh, and what that means is that when you're modeling a document, this document becomes five random variables. So we have a random variable DW for each word in the vocabulary. So this document is represented by five uh, variables. Uh, the DWs are Bernoulli, uh, so they take on values 0 or 1. <clears throat> and they're independent and they're identically distributed. Right? That's, that's the independence assumption. So uh, the parameters of the multiple Bernoulli model, you have the PW. And what PW means in this case, it's the probability that the word occurs in a document. The word W occurs in a document. So it's the probability that the W is 1. Um, so if you have a document A, B, and C, A, B, A, C, as we have there, the way to compute the probability for that is as follows. So you take the probability for A times the probability for B times the probability for C because they're all IID, right? They're all independent and identically distributed. Uh, and then you take 1 minus P of D, and the reason you do that is the word D doesn't, uh, the word little d doesn't occur in the document D. So we need the probability of the word not occurring, and that's just 1 minus the probability of the word occurring, and the same for word E, okay? So again, it's all a rehash. Hopefully, this is totally obvious to you. Uh, now, this is for the specific document. In general, for a, big, uh, for a document D, the probability is a product over the words in the vocabulary. P of DW, DW is the presence or absence Bernoulli variable, 0 or 1. And that product is going to decompose into two little products. Right? So uh, 1 minus DW, that's the probability that the word doesn't occur, and you use that for words that don't occur in the document, and PW, the probability that the word occurs, you use that for words that do occur in the document. So that is your model, that is the probability that the, the model will assign to observation D, five rent or however many Bernoulli variables you have. Um, and then how do you estimate things in that model? Well, you just count, right? PW means the probability that W will be present in a randomly picked document, so the way you estimate it is you look at the proportion of documents in your set of examples that contain the word W. So that's how you would, uh, that's how you would compute it. You just count the number of documents that contain the word and divide by the total number of documents. So that would be the maximum likelihood estimate. Okay. So that's the multiple Bernoulli. That's what we did um, in, the, in, the, in the previous lecture. Um, now, there is another way to model the same quantity, another way to model a document. And, uh, and this one is an urn. Uh, or a multinomial model, or a sequence model, or a unigram model. It has many names in many different domains, but it's, it's all the same thing. Um, so uh, imagine that you have an urn, and the way you draw things from an urn is you basically, you have an urn with words, you reach into it, you pull up a word, see what the word is, write it down, and then put it back into the urn. That's the analogy. Right. So uh, if you have that, then the document is represented by four random variables, right? This time, we're going to have one random variable for each token that we had in the document. So that's going to be our first, second, third, and fourth. 
And uh, technically, this means that we only can have documents of length four, uh, but this is trivially relaxed, so just assume that for now. All of our documents are the same length. Um, so uh, the individual variables di, so notice they're not dw anymore, right? This variable was tied to a word, and it was either zero or one, the word occurs or doesn't occur. di is a position in a document. i is a position in the document, and di is the word that goes into that position. So you have as many variables as the tokens in the document, and the values for di are a set of vocabulary terms. So each word in the vocabulary is a possible value, right? So each di has one, two, three, four, five possible values. So uh, different representation, different random variables. If you make that assumption, you still have your probabilities pw, but they mean a slightly different thing now, right? So uh, pw now means the probability that the ith token in the document will be the word w. Right, so the probability that the third word in the document will be R. Uh, now, we're assuming that the DIs are IID, so the probability that the third word is Ardvark is the same as the probability that the seventh word is Ardvark. Right? They're identically distributed. It's the same number for any position in the document. That's why this P is not subscribed by an index. It's just the probability that Ardvark will be, uh, sort of think of it as the, the next term in the document at any position. <clears throat> so here's how you estimate the probability of our document. It's a little bit different now, right? We have four random variables, first, second, third, and fourth position, right? For the first one, we have P of A, little p of A, then little p of B, little p of A, and little p of C. And of course, the little p of a is the same thing in position one as it is in position three, so I can group them together, right? That's why you have p of a squared times p of b times p of c. So that's for this specific document. And in general, for document d, you would have the following expression. So you have a product that now goes over the tokens in the document's positions, right? And you look at the probability that the word in that position should occur. And that's just your PW. And uh, this step from here to here is uh, moving around of the words, right? So this was tied to their positions in the document. Uh, but uh, because the probabilities are identical, because, uh, because they're identically distributed, I can regroup the terms in the product as I want. And I can put together all the P's for the same word. So that's what I'm doing here. So I have p for a given word, and then that's going to be raised to the power of how many times did that word occur in the document, right? So just like a occurred twice, so it's p of a squared, so that's p of a raised to the frequency squared, right? And then p of b would be raised to power of 1, because b occurred 1 times, and p of uh, e would be raised to power 0, right? So uh, that's, that's, why, that's why this product can go over the entire uh, vocabulary, because P of E would be raised to zero, because the word E didn't occur in the document. Okay, so that's, that's, that's the form of the model, and how do you estimate the parameters? Well, it's slightly different again this time. Now, PW means a different thing. It's an expected frequency of the word W. Uh, it's not the proportion of documents that contain it, it's the expected frequency. So the way you count it is, you have a set of documents, you go over that set, and each set, you look at what proportion of the words in the document, the word W constitutes, right? How many times did it occur in D divided by the total length of D? And then you average that over the number of documents in your sample. Okay, so uh, two different models for representing the same uh, kind of entity, a document consisting of, uh, of a bunch of words. In one case, it's a set. In another case, it's an urn, or another name for it is a multi-set. Right. <coughs> because it allows frequencies. Okay, so now we're gonna use these guys uh, to do something interesting with our probabilistic model. So let's go back. The probability ranking principle should rank by the probability of relevance given the document. Uh, that's the ratio, right? We're doing Bayes' rule, throwing away the priors, and so on and so forth. Um, and we said that that, in the new form of the model where we're modeling frequencies, for, for the Earn model, that takes the following form, right? And, and you can just look in the previous slide and see why that's happening. All I'm doing is I'm just moving the two probabilities under the same 
product. So I have PW to the frequency and QW to the frequency. P is my model for the relevant class, Q is my model for the non-relevant class. Right? So that's what the probability ranking principle would look like under the urn model that we had on the previous slide. So the bottom part, the Qs, that's our background model. That's the model of the non-relevant class. And um, I guess we're going to call it the background model. And the way we can estimate it is very much the same way as we did in the classical model. right? So <clears throat> uh, we want to estimate a model for the non-relevant class. We don't have any examples of non-relevant documents, but we have the entire collection. And as we said, most of the documents are non-relevant, so we can just take the entire collection and use that as a proxy for, uh, for the whole um, uh, for the non-relevant class. So your estimate of QW would be just the counting estimate from the previous slide, right? We said that that's how we estimate the probabilities in the model. So this time we take uh, all the documents. So um, yeah, this assumes that you have labels, but when you don't have labels, this is what you do. You take all the documents that you have in your collection, and over them you average the proportion of time, uh, the, the relative frequency of the word W, in the document D and average it out over the entire thing. So uh, this is like taking the average of the unigram probability distributions over the entire um, over the entire collection of documents, and that's going to be our background model, the model of the non-relevant class. <clears throat> now the top is the we're going to call it the relevance model, and this is the part that corresponds to the relevant class. And if we had some examples. If somebody gave us some examples of relevant documents, this is how you would do it, right? You would go over the relevant documents, you would look at, uh, take the frequency of the word in the document divided by length, so proportion of uh, that this word makes up, and then average it over all the relevant documents, uh, right? So here's an example. If somebody told us that you have a bunch of, um, a bunch of documents, then we could estimate a unigram language model P from that collection of documents just by counting how many times different words occur in those documents and normalizing counts so they sum, sum out one. Uh, and the trick, of course, is what do you do when you have no relevant examples? So when you have no relevant examples, you have a big set of documents and you have no indication of which ones of them are uh, relevant. And you can't do the same trick as you did for the non-relevant documents because relevant documents are very rare, right? Uh, there are very few of them. So how are we going to estimate anything here? And uh, the way we're going to do this is we're going to make an assumption. And that is the core assumption behind the relevance model. The assumption is that our query is a random sample from this unknown probability distribution P. Right? We have no examples of relevant documents. The only thing we have is a query. So we're going to take that query and see how far we can run with it, how far we can get by estimating things directly from the query. So what it means is we have some unknown probability distribution over the entire vocabulary, right? That's our P. Our query is a set of words, and we're going to try to use the query to guess the parameters of, of P. Of course, if you try to do it directly, it would be silly, right? If you just try to count how many times the words occur in the query, you're going to get with a, you're going to end up with a very degenerate model. It's a model that's going to have a probability of one third for Monica Lewinsky and Case, and a probability of zero for everything else. Not, that's not a very good model. That's not a model of what relevant documents look like. Uh, so the game we're going to play is a little bit different. We're going to assume that this probability distribution P has a certain form, and then we're going to do Bayesian estimation based on the query, and we'll do that in the next lecture.